Hey folks, Technivorous here. Today we are going to be going over all the different infill options you have in Fusion 360. So we have printed a bunch of, well, basically they're just going to be coasters because they're plastic pucks that we stopped printing about halfway through in order to get a good look at the inside. Now I know you can't see this from there, so we're going to give you some good views of the close-ups and a couple good views of the paths of them actually being simulated in Fusion 360. So let's jump over to Fusion and check it out right now. So here we are in Fusion 360. As you can see, it's still simulating away. If you'd like to get access to your infills, you're going to need to leave the design workspace and head over to the manufacturing workspace. Now, if you don't know how to print with Fusion 360 yet, I will put a video link up at the end of this video that you can click on and see how to do all of this. So basically, once you have it set up once, you'll be able to go in and slice in no time. Now, the infill settings are right here once you're into the manufacturing setting and you've selected additive and you can basically just go ahead and click infill fff infill and then it's going to be right here so all your settings are in here not just your patterns your densities angles and things like that as well so let's get right to the different patterns that we have we're going to skip over rectilinear because it's pretty simple we do have another square one down here so you'll see that one and I did not print two of these ones because I was having issues getting them to slice. They were taking quite a bit of time and I felt like let's just go over the ones that are a little bit more practical that I'm going to use a lot more often because there are plenty of options to choose from right here. So let's jump into it. First infill we have at bat today is the honeycomb infill. It is a pretty standard infill. You can find it in pretty much any slicer. It always looks good and does the job. As you can see here, this is the finished product. We will get you a little bit of a close up here in a minute after we show some footage of it actually being laid down now. Like I said, pretty standard infill. You can get this pretty much any slicer. And this was really quick at slicing this with the honeycomb infill. There's a close up for you pretty decent picture i apologize not all the pictures are quite as good as some of the others but not too shabby you can see the pattern clearly next pattern we have is the star pattern now this one is my personal favorite i think it's gorgeous it kind of plays tricks with the eye on this spinning platter here but uh it looks really really nice and i'm not sure if the star is the larger star or the x-shaped star but either way I like both of those stars. I guess they could have called it stars instead of just star. Here you can see some printing and a nice close-up of the pattern. Uh, and you get a better idea of what I'm saying when I, when I say I can't tell if it's the X shape or uh, this uh, eight-pointed star there. But uh, very nice infill. And I'm going to be using that one a lot because I love the way it looks. So uh, The next one we're going to go over is going to be the spherical and that one is pretty self-explanatory it creates little spheres inside the infill and basically just builds a bunch of balls on top of each other it's pretty cool to look at pretty interesting to watch and just another all-around nice infill Next up is another one of my favorites. Depending on which way you look at this, it could look at like either a flower as it is named or a little four-leaf clover. I really, really enjoy watching this one as well. And again, it's kind of a mesmerizing pattern as you see it move. It's also nice to watch it being printed. It is one of those ones that moves very fast and these uh, compartments are very small. Now remember, all of these percentages of infill are exactly the same. So you see a lot more space in that star pattern than you do here in this flower pattern. And there's a good close up of the four leaf clover kind of pattern that I mentioned, but there is also that larger flower design in there as well, surrounding another what looks to be eight pointed star. So this next one is just simple squares. We did do one of these. The first infill pattern that you have an option for, we skipped basically because it is just a grid pattern. We did do the squares. This looks almost good enough to eat. Just put a little butter and syrup on there. It is a floating waffle and it looks pretty much just like one. So this one came out really well, really, really clean. I think I'm happy with all of these so far because uh, the, the, the slicing capability of Fusion 360 has really, really impressed me. It's been really, really fast in designating that path. And, and we're on to another one I see here. 
Um, this is the end of the squares. There's a couple close-ups. And we're looking at this is uh, what Joel would call the bow ties. So this is auxetic, um, and it does make little bow ties, basically, in a hatch cross form pattern kind of like a mc escher uh drawing where they're fit together like that i guess all of these are like that so um see if we can get a little bit of a close-up this is one of those pictures i said was a little bit worse quality i got a lot more glare off of the blue pla let's take a look at a couple of more the next one is rhombus 3d now this was a very interesting pattern it went down in a cross and square shape and then started to build up and started to cross over itself in that third dimension so very very interesting also kind of looked like a waffle not as waffle like as the grid but very very beautiful to watch and again we're getting uh, decent pictures i think a better picture of the wood filament than the pla so the next one we're going to be taking a look at here is the rhombile now rhombile is another one i did in blue pla and this one basically looks like a cube shot in a perspective shot so you get those um four basically rhombuses is what they are um but they're angled to look like a cube from looking at it from the point perspective so pretty interesting to watch this one go down as well um, and I tried to get close-ups to this one, and it did them no justice. You'll have to print this one for yourself and see how beautiful it is. You can kind of get an idea from the mesmerizing shot there in the middle spinning around, but it, I don't think that quite does it justice either. The last one we're going to take a look at is elongated tetrahedron. Now, this one uh, starts off as kind of a circle in the bottom and then builds itself up into a square, probably the most waffle-like pattern. Uh, it also took longer to slice than some of the other ones, so probably not going to be using this one too much, but it is very, very beautiful to look at and fun to watch it print. So that's basically going to be it. You might notice that I did skip over not just the first entry that you can use for info, but two of the other ones as well. And there you have it. I did not get successful prints with two of those infills, as I said, but the rest worked out pretty well. And I'm pretty sure that was just impatience and user error on my part. So I'd like to show you a picture of all of these guys together in one photograph. there you have it that's going to end our deep dive into fusion 360's infill as i said i'll put that video up here so you can see the infill slicing tutorial and don't forget to check out all of the other awesome options in here now i don't use fusion 360 for slicing everything if i happen to download a model or say i make a model in blender it is slightly easier to just drag and drop those models into kira however since i do a lot of modeling in fusion 360 already it makes sense for me to have this set up ready to go so I can just click over to my manufacturing tab and then immediately slice the object and send it to a disk to put in my printer. So uh, it has its place and it is very, very powerful. So it's definitely worth checking out. And I'll put that card up right here so you can see that tutorial. And don't forget to smash that subscribe button, hit like on this video, and share it to all your friends. Thanks, guys. As always, this channel is brought to you by the Spine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, head over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. That's going to be it for this video. As always, I am Technivorous, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out our main channel page where we do a free giveaway for our subscribers every month. So far, we've given away things like a Capricorn PTFE tubing kit and spools of filament. So the giveaway videos are always pinned to our main channel page. So all you have to do is subscribe and leave a comment on the giveaway video for the current contest. Feel free to check out this video right here. YouTube picked it from my content just for you. And if you haven't already, you can hit the subscribe button right here. So what are you waiting for? Become a Technivore now. Thanks again. Technivorous out.